All right, what's going on everyone? It's Josh here from Crypto Busy, and today we're going to be looking at some coins, uh, so random collection of coins really, just some ones that a lot of people have requested recently in the comments, and uh, we're going to take a look at them, analyze them, and see where they could potentially go in the near future. If you do enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more as we post content every single day, and with that guys, we'll get into the video. So. We start off with Bitcoin, of course, the main mover of the market, and you can see we've been consolidating for a while. Now, why is this a good thing? This is a good thing because it means we can have altcoins flourish. Now, altcoins only really flourish when Bitcoin is consolidating like this, and uh, that means you know we can really let them do their thing before Bitcoin makes a move one way or the other. Now, I do still think Bitcoin is headed for a move up to around $12,000. And uh, if it had a momentum move up there, then we'd probably see altcoins take a little bit of a uh, dip or a fallback. But in the meantime, we can see them go up lots and lots because we are just consolidating back and forth for the last few days, really. Uh, so we'll, we'll just keep our eye on Bitcoin. Nothing really to say right now, but we are waiting for things to break through the 11,600 level back to the kind of $12,000 level. Now for Ethereum, a similar type of thing. We are in a small downtrend channel. And if we can break through that and maybe retest on some support, then we can move back up to the $400 mark. And as we've said in a few videos now, lots of people seem to be buying options and binary options of Ethereum at $400. So a lot of people are liking that level for Ethereum in the near future. Now XRP is an interesting one. I think uh, you know XRP is one that's on a lot of people's minds, especially for example, Tom, he likes XRP a lot. He makes a lot of videos on XRP. And uh, we can see, unfortunately, we broke down through this trend line. I am expecting us to kind of come down to reach the 23 cent level, potentially rebound. However, if that fails, we can come back down to the 22 cent level. And that is where I'd be looking to kind of buy some more up. Now, on top of that, let's take a look at the next coin. We've got Matic Network. Now, Matic Network is in this long, long term downtrend. And I do think we eventually will see a nice breakout. And hopefully it's a clean one where we can target pretty much the highs as you know the bigger the downtrend usually the bigger the breakout now bnb is a coin that i called quite a few times over the last few weeks and you can see we had this nice retest this we broke out we retested the triangle and then we came out again we are now retesting this level which actually becomes support so we can turn this into a green box now and uh, that's where we can hopefully see things rebound again and go up higher and test 31 dollars but i'm still expecting around the 33 level for bnb now we have dash now dash is one that has broken out of this big big long-term downtrend however it's coming back to retest this major area of support i am again expecting things to be very swiftly up to the upside here uh, but we will have to break through this miniature downtrend here before anything major happens so keep your eye on dash as we are reaching a key key level up next we have BNT, we can see we caught a nice double bottom entry here in our private group um, and you can see we rose right up to about $1.40 from about 95 cent and uh, we have come back down here, we could form another d potential um, double bottom, so like here for example. However, things could, of course, come back down a little bit lower if Bitcoin uh, doesn't really do its thing. And we want to wait for this trend line to break before we get into any major positions. Now, as you can see with Zillica, we've come down, we've broken down out of this uh, kind of trend line. We've come back and we're retesting here. Unfortunately for Zillica, as much as I like it, I do think price is headed to the downside, whether that's to 1.6, 1.5 or maybe even 1.3 or 4. So again, keep your eyes on Zillica and we'll see what happens there. Now let's head on over to Luna Crush. So we're going to take a look at some coins that are doing very well socially. So as you can see, in terms of social rankings, which is how this is ranked right now, we've got Bitcoin as the number one, as it pretty much always is. We have Ethereum again, number two, as it mostly is. We have Zillica at number three. So Zillica is very popular right now on you know Twitter and social media. Chainlink, as again, a usual one. XRP, Uniswap. Digibyte, Icon, making its way in there, uh, Cardano, and Yearn Finance, the top 10. Now, Icon's actually, ICX is actually a top three in terms of alt rank right now, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, it's slowly creeping its way back up the ranks. And let's take a look at some tokenomics real quick. So it's got a Galaxy score of 67 out of 100, which is pretty good. Usually above 70 is very good, but 67 is definitely respectable. And on top of that, it's about 38 cent right now. Of course, it's all-time high has been, I think, over $10. And uh, this is definitely a coin that I really, really enjoy and I do think is very good and can. Uh, it's definitely something to look into. With a market cap of $217 million, there's definitely lots of room to grow. 
and I, I think it's definitely possible. Now if we were to do some analysis on it, let's just bring it up real quick. So ICX2, let's do against uh, Tether. So here we go, fresh chart. So what do I see here? I see a long term downtrend like so. Uh, it won't be the most beautiful trend line in the world, but you get the idea, something like that. And uh, we want to kind of wait for a breakout of this area. This has obviously been a very, very big area of support in the past like this. And uh, we'll probably see more of a consolidation around to the end of October and then a potential breakout. If we get a clean breakout above the 42 cent level, then we can start targeting something like 54 cent and back up to highs or recent highs of around 70 cent and beyond. So Icon is definitely one to watch as well, potential trade set up there. Now let's cover some news articles to finish off the video, just a quick one today. So we've got Coinbase received over 1800 law enforcement for information requests in the first half of 2020. So very interesting here about Coinbase. We've actually got quite a bit of news to cover about Coinbase. I mean, they've had a recent, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a scandal, but there's uh, you know a statement that uh, Brian Armstrong, the CEO put out and you know a lot of people didn't like it, a lot of people did like it. So it's good and bad for different reasons. But a lot of people seem to be leaving the company. We'll get onto that in a second. But not regarding that, you can see Coinbase received over 1,800 different requests for information. So this is obviously something that we're seeing more of now, regulation in the crypto space. And law enforcement companies wanted to have information about these crypto companies so that they can kind of get a bigger hold on them. So this is, uh, of course, Brian Armstrong, the CEO here. And uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. You know, should we see more regulation? Will that help Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in the long run? Or do we want as little regulation as possible, like we have now, for example, to be able to kind of keep doing things the way they're going? Do you think it's good or bad in the long term? We'd be very interested to know your thoughts on that. Now, on top of that, we have crypto traders bet on the US election as FTX prediction markets hit record volume. So, of course, we have the, uh, you know, we have. So, of course, we have the US election coming up very, very soon in about a month or so, just under. And uh, we have Biden versus Trump, of course. Now, I'm not a US citizen or anything, so I'm probably not in the best place to say anything about it. And I like to keep politics out of the channel. But you know, lots of polls are suggesting Biden is ahead. And I think, as you can see, that has uh, led certain prices to take effect. So people are placing last minute bets on the outcome of the 2020 US presidential election, which is pushing the volume on FTX prediction markets to record highs, drawing new users to the crypto derivatives exchange. So this could be, again, a good way of bringing people into the crypto world, making them trade and uh, kind of getting them involved, which is, of course, a very good thing for us that are invested in the market. Again, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments who do you think is going to win the election if you had to bet on it. And, you know, I'm very undecided myself who will win. Uh, I think there's a lot of kind of obviously pros and cons to both. But uh, yeah, I'd be very interested to see, especially those of you that actually live in the US, what you guys think and which one you think would be better for cryptocurrency in the long run if, uh, you know, either one won. And finally, we have Coinbase's global marketing head latest to join mass exit. So if you guys haven't been following the news, we've had this big, big thing going on with Coinbase right now, where, like I said before, CEO Brian Armstrong put out an article where he basically said that, uh, you know, we we're going to stay apolitical in Coinbase. You know, they're not going to involve politics with business. And uh, I think that's quite a good idea. I think, you know, I've said this before many times on the channel, if you're trying to run an efficient, you know, streamlined company, Politics is something you should most likely keep out of because, you know, it can really drive division more than unity. And that's not something that you need more of in a business that's supposed to be churning over profit. So I don't think, you know, politics is the way to go when it comes to mixing it with business. However, and most of you agree with that from the comments in the last few videos. But, you know, lots of people are leaving now because of this, because a lot of people have maybe different ethics or different morals, uh, different standpoints or political activist standpoints. And they don't like this new anti-political um, kind of way of thinking with Coinbase. So they're actually leaving. We've had the VP leave. We've got the Coinbase's uh, global marketing head has just left. So lots of people are leaving over this. But I do still think in the long run, this might be for the best. Um, these people obviously aren't suited for the company if that is the, uh, the way they want to go about things. And uh, I'm sure they'll still be okay running. I don't think they're going to really have too much of a knockback from this. So be very, very interested again for you guys to think, should we mix politics with business or not? And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Have a good one. And uh, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.